Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today, gonna be a match for your Patreon cast for the week of May the... Let's see, the... Hmm... 30th? Maybe the 25th or so? It's gonna be Hero Marine versus Serral on Oxide. This is from Home Story Cop, bottom left it is Serral, top right it is Big Gabe, it is Hero Marine. The blue Terran player. All right, man. So Terran has been giving Serral a lot of fits lately, right? Here, Marine beat him a while ago. Clem beat him recently. And European Terrans are, I feel like, catching up to their European Zerg counterparts, which is a bit of a trouble here for Serral. So 16, 18, 17 here from Serral. One Rex, Rax expand here from Hero Marine. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy from either of these players indeed, although never forget that Proxy Rax plays are definitely doable all the time in StarCraft 2. Terrans use them a whole bunch against players like Serral, which is why he's sending his overlords out for scouting purposes. Actually, this one just going straight across the map. This one is not looking for proxies at all. If you're a Marine threw a proxy in the path of an overlord that came straight from Serral's base, he would be a big dumb. But he's not. He's Big Gabe, and he's making a Reaper. So let's see what this Reaper is up to. I mean, obviously he's gonna run down to the natural base, maybe kill a Zergling. If he's like, super lucky, he'll get two Zergling kills. He can tell all his buddies about it, but he's also gonna die. So <laughs> expansion on the way here from here, Marine. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Just allows the algorithm to know that I'm here and things are working. Things are going according to plan. So Reaper name is Dream, this Minecraft speedrunner. Yes, I have heard the story of Dream a little bit. Was dragged into Mech's kangaroo court to explain his failures as a leader. Dream tried to explain that Dream, the StarCraft pro, I mean general, was a different person. But Mech needed a scapegoat, so he sent Dream to the Reaper program. It is said that he has, he only has a 1 in a 177 million chance of surviving. <laughs> so those of you who don't know Dream, a Minecraft speedrunner, which is like, whatever. Speedrunning's cool. But there's a random seed category. Ooh, he's gonna get this. He's gonna get it. Oh, that's forced. Forced into a spore. Tragic stuff here. So there's a random seed category where basically you start the game with a random seed. You don't know what it is. And depending on how that RNG goes, it can help you win the game faster or slow you down. So apparently Dream got like this incredibly lucky combination of events. That somebody mathematically went out to say that it was a one, one in 177 million chance of happening. And got the world record, and anyway, people have accused him of cheating, but who knows? I don't, that's for sure, I wasn't there. Anyway, third CC on the way from Hero Marine, third base on the way from Serral, just about complete. Reaper buddy, dream, no kills? But really wants one. Also really wants to see if there's a Roach Warren coming up. But you're not getting in the front door, that's for sure. Also, taking advantage of the fact that these lings don't have speed is sort of a huge deal as well. Once the lings have speed, the Reaper's time is over in this game, right? So he recognizes once Metabolic Boost is done, his days are done. And that's why you send the Hellions out right as soon as speed is done. Because Hellions off creep are amazing against Zerglings that are off creep. It's their favorite place to be. Banshee on the way from Hero Marine. Any Overlord scout? No, doesn't look like it. Did this Overlord die? No. Where'd it go? Did it come all the way back home? Nope, it's over here. Okay, it's it was off the map. That's why I couldn't see it on the mini-map, because it wasn't on the mini-map. Annoying. All right, so Overlord comes in, sees the third CC, is gonna, is gonna see this. I just don't know how he doesn't see this. And there it is, yeah. So he scouts. Ye old cloak being researched here, and he's like, Are you gonna cancel it? No, right, there's another banshee on the way. Sure seems like Hero Marine is going for it anyway here. Alright, so Overlord dies, but he knew that was gonna happen. Hellion's poking around the outside, but creep tumors are continuing to push along all avenues here for Serral. Pretty happy about that. So, yeah, I guess this is a Patreon cast, right? So those of you who are watching it the week of May the 25th, thank you so much for supporting me 
on patreon.com slash falconpaladin for at least one dollar a month you get an ad free viewing experience of this cast and three others this month so if you know if you want to watch ad free viewing for the falcon paladin stuff then check me out patreon.com slash falconpaladin for as little as one dollar a month then uh you too can get that ad free viewing four times a month pretty good deal i think Additionally, if you don't want to support Patreon, I understand some people don't want to do that. You can hit me up directly through YouTube by clicking the join button down below this video. Becoming a member of the Falcon Pal squad. Or the Falcon Pals if you just want to keep it shorter. So yeah, give it a look. It gives you access to extra emotes you can use when you're commenting on live streams or commenting on... Or commenting on the, uh, on the videos. And access uh, gives you a little badge next to your name as well that uh, gets better the longer you've been a member of the channel. So, yeah. Again, I know a lot of people don't like Patreon, so. All right. So, Cloak Banshees are in here, and there's one queen to try to stop them. Let's see. Four drones get killed. Spore Crawler has to be made and canceled to keep a drone alive, which is, again, lost resources. And this is how you do it, man. You're a Marine. He can do this. He's very capable of macroing his face off back home while also harassing Serral on the other side of the map. Despite the fact that Serral's creep spread is getting absolutely disgusting right now, and I'm not even sure how many Hellions you would need to clear this as consistently uh, as you would need to to keep it back. This is actually getting kind of insane. So I guess a scan would help. All right, those tumors are down. That counts for something. Drop, heading over, big old double medevac drop here at about six minutes, seven minutes or so. It's going to line up with plus one armor. It looks like not really plus one attack. Creep tumor down. Doesn't want to use a scan on that, apparently. So here we go. Big on low, but guess what? Mainlings have speed. So <laughs> this is not going to happen. Big Gabe, forced to pick up and get the heck on out of there. Doesn't like what he sees. Whatsoever, I can't necessarily blame him for that either. Plus one, plus one coming in from Serral, which again indicates we're probably going to see Ultralisks in the future if we get to that point in the game. Usually don't start off with a plus one melee attack this early unless your plans are them Ultralisks. Because if you're planning on going Hydro Lurker, then the missile attack is better. Obviously. So I don't know, here Marine hasn't really been able to do all that much damage. He's been dancing around the outside, killing a few creep tumors here and there. Kept this Banshee alive, which is nice, but the Queens are a problem, and Banshee escapes. Ooh, got her with him. Oh, that Banshee doesn't escape. I thought she made it to that high ground. Oh, was the Overseer seeing? Overseers do see things, but yeah, Widow Mines on the field of play right now. Drilling Claws getting researched back home. It is a Hydralisk Den, though. So maybe he's like, well, I wasn't planning on needing Hydralisks, but if there's going to be that many Widow Mines here... See, and if you keep your Hellions alive, then you can use them as Hellbats to kill large numbers of Zerglings. Once again, the Banelings are what are keeping the Zerg player alive right now, which is really frustrating to Hero Marine, too. Doesn't like seeing that whatsoever. Another attack. Heading up. Clearing some Creep Tumors. And this is a surround play, if I've ever seen one. Yeah. Widowmine's getting some hits off, but not really getting a big, massive, juicy hit off like Hero Marine would like them to. Man, the deeper you delve onto this creep, the worse it is for you, man, right? The dwarves delved too deeply and too greedily. Terran can do that, too. If they delve far too deeply onto the creep here, then uh, bad things happen. And we are getting that lurker den. So Cyril is doing the missile attack stuff, but continuing to get plus two on the Banelings. And the Lings and the Ultras. I guess plus two on the Banelings is pretty good. But also having full attack upgrades on Ultralisks is amazing. Another Banshee down. I think that's going to be it for Banshees today. No real reason uh, to make any more of them. And yeah, I told you, here Marine's macro is nuts. He's really kept Serral on this side of the map. Serral's not maxed out at nine and a half minutes. But he is actually making ten drones at a time. He's going to be at 98 workers here pretty soon. And then we should start seeing a little bit more aggression here from Serral. He's done a good job keeping his stuff alive. That said, there's a forced cancel on the bottom right-hand base that Serral really would have liked to have. Is that a tank splash? That's a 16-kill Widow Mine right there, friends. Ho, ho, ho. 
problematic indeed. So it kind of defends this bottom right. We've got one, two, three, four, five total Zerg bases. A uh, sixth base would be pretty good to have, but Hero Marine said, no, you're spread too thin to defend that. So let's get rid of it, shall we? Zerglings, Bane, pick up, man. Too many Banes. Widowmine hits. Okay, that second one was not good. The first one was all right. Yeah, decent bailing hits there as well, but the splits from Hero Marine are fantastic. Really, really good splits. Again, that's the thing. With your banelings, you're kind of, a lot of the time, relying on the Terran to screw it up. <laughs> right, if their splits are bad, then sure, you'll make some really great connections. But if their splits are good, then your banelings are just not getting a whole lot done other than zoning the Terran out of position where, uh, where they want to be. Six kills on that Widow Mine, and ready to fire again. Thank you, good sir. We can pull back to that one or these ones as necessary. The creep spread, again, from Serral is really good right now. It is absolutely pushing up here. The Hero Marine's fourth base. Ah, what am I hitting a few of those banelings? Hitting off creep. Problematic, but the lurkers have sieged up. We've seen Serral do this. He did this to Beyond in one of the games they played against each other on Oxide. Serral likes this position for his lurkers, and I can understand why. No, they're no saving it. The banelings plus the lurker splash. Hold on! Nope, it's down. I thought for a second maybe it was going to work. And just too much. Too much lurkers, not enough anything else. This group is forced to pick up down the right side. And Hero Marine does end up losing that fourth base, which is a problem. That represented a larger source of his income. Than uh, Sarah losing one of his bases did. Look at these lings fighting against these queens. And then lings and mainlings are rolling in. Ah, too many Zerglings! Too many! It's 95 workers from Serral. He's just... His macro is just through the roof right now. It's forced to cancel. Or perhaps he just straight up lost the 5th base again. 6th base, I guess, at this point, considering this one is up and running. But resources lost. 15,000 for Serral. 11,000 for Hero Marine. Free Siege Tank, kind of lagging behind the group. We see that too much from Siege Tanks these days. I just, I don't know. Zergs have got them figured out, man. They know to look for them, right? If they're lagging behind the group, just pick them off. Or if they're exposed at all, they will get focused down. And it's hard for them to accomplish a whole ton. So here Marine spending his money exceptionally well. He's down in double digits right now for cash. Which, whew, you don't see that a lot at the 13-minute mark of the game where you've got, you know, 55 workers. But Serral just swarming. I don't know what other adjective to use here. I guess verb to use here is swarming. I guess it could be an adjective as well. But that's a lifted off orbital command for sure. I'm not sure you're coming in and saving this, sir. Yeah, that's lifted off. And by that I mean Big Gabe is worried about this battle over here and this is not going to lift off. I'm really... Okay, it's dead. All right, that should not have happened. Hero Marine really focusing on this push up the middle right now. He did kill a couple lurkers in the process. That was great. Well, look, Serral's taking this top left to base that Hero Marine doesn't even know that it exists. Or this one that, man, got killed again? Hero Marine keeps sending units down there. And Serral's not ready for it, and I'm not ready for it either. So I have one thing in common with him. That's a decent... Three kill Widow Mine hit, four kill Widow Mine hit. So much Zerg coming up here though. Lurker's getting the flank attack on the tanks. They were dead anyway. That group's going down. This group's going down. And that's your GG. Serral is just too much. He's just too much in this game. The early damage put out by Hero Marine was not enough to get that win. And as a result, that that was it for, for Big Gabe. Serral was just too much today. He is not unstoppable. I'll tell you, I've recently cast games, ZVTs, where he's lost. So anyone in the comments that wants to say that Serral cannot be beat, that is not the truth. It's hard to beat him, but it's hard to beat anybody at the top of their game. Hard to beat stats, right? It's hard to beat uh, Clem right now. Clem's the number one ranked player overall right now for a Ligulac. That's nuts. And actually, no Hydralisks died today. 
huh, I guess Cyril didn't make a lot of them, but he only has six, and none of them died. So 400 Zerglings, 60 Banelings went down, six Lurkers died in Queens. So it was it was uh, Ling, Lurker, Bane, Queen, mostly. And I guess seven Metavacs died, so that's a good, uh, that's an impressive number for, I guess, Queens and Hiders to work together to kill. Viper is not even really required here. I don't think we saw them all that much. Did they just pop? They might have just popped out. They might have just been getting into that tech when all this happened. Anyway. Anywho. Great game. Honestly, Cyril just... He only lost six drones. If you only kill six drones in 14 minutes and Cyril's able to happily sit on 96 workers, it's going to be a bad time. Hero Marine losing that orbital on the right side to Lurkers without lifting, it was definitely a major problem too. I mean, he did force a couple cancels on that base on the bottom right, but you just need more than that. And I don't know if it's better splits. I don't know if the Hellions need to get more done. Cyril's creep spread on this map was just insane. He got it all the way across the map. He literally got it all the way to the north side of the map here. In a couple places. And all the way spread down this way, too. I mean, that's... Cyril's Creep Thread, when it's on, is one of the more intimidating things in all of StarCraft. Amazing. Amazing, amazing stuff. All right. So that right there is gonna be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a Patreon cast. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. If you like what you saw and what you heard today... You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourself.